And speaking of priorities, for most countries worth their salt, the priority is chips now, semiconductors. A global contest is underway. All key players are competing, trying to woo the major chip makers of the world. And this week, the US has scored big. It has managed to win over TSMC. That's the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC. It's the world's biggest chip maker. TSMC will build a factory in the United States. And this is a significant commitment. TSMC will invest $65 billion on this expansion, $65 billion. And where will this money go? Towards building three chip-making plants in Arizona. When will these facilities go online? The rollout could begin next year, meaning the first Made in America chips could be out next year, but all three plants will be operational only by 2030. And how did America win this deal? TSMC, after all, is a giant in chip making, the go-to manufacturer for companies like Apple and NVIDIA. They could have invested anywhere they wanted. So why did they choose the US? Because Washington offered the best concessions and subsidies. The government is giving $6.6 .6 billion to TSMC. This is in the form of grant, $6.6 .6 billion. On top of that, the company can get $5 billion in loans. So overall, America has extended more than $11 billion in benefits to TSMC. It's a fantastic offer. So the company agreed to raise its investment commitment in the US. Earlier, they'd set aside, some, set aside some $40 billion. This was for the factory in Arizona. They were anyway going to build it. But now they will invest $65 billion. So they've increased it by $25 billion. And for the US, it's both a strategic and a financial investment. They want to win the chip race. They control the technology. They have the expertise to make advanced chips. They design them. What they lack is the production capability. Do you know how many advanced chips the US makes today? Zero. No wonder Washington wants to change this number. So it has set itself an ambitious target to boost production and command a 20% market share by 2030. That is their target, 20% market share. TSMC can help the US get there, but it's not the only company they're depending on. The US is engaging with other companies too. It has set aside a budget of some $50 billion, more than $50 billion, just to give out as grants to chip makers. So the Americans have the firepower to win this chip race. But like I said in the beginning, every major player is competing, and they're all willing to make big bets. And America's biggest challenge comes in the form of China. Beijing has set aside some $140 billion for its chip industry, $140 billion. This money will be spent over five years. It will be used to incentivize production, extend subsidies on equipment, and set up more fabrication plants. China's goal is to become self-sufficient. It wants to do both, design and manufacture chips. As of today, they have the manufacturing capability, but they fall short on the design front. China is also a big market. In the month of January alone, the sale of semiconductors in China crossed $14 billion. And companies like TSMC also make chips in China. They have two factories in Nanjing and Shanghai. Plus, China has poached talent from Taiwan. In 2019, 3,000 Taiwanese engineers were working in China on semiconductors. So there is codependence between the chip-making industries of Taiwan and China. And the US and its allies want to break this. They've been trying to isolate China by slapping export restrictions on chip makers and by denying Beijing important chip making tools and components. But so far, the plan has not worked. Despite the curbs, China's imports have surged by over 90%. We are talking about imports of chip, chip making equipment, a 90% jump. At this rate, China could give the US a run for its money. Then we have Europe. They're doing their own thing. Promising money to chip makers. Last year, the EU cleared a plan to ramp up their investment in this space. And how much are the Europeans promising? More than $45 billion. This will be a mix of public and private financing. The money will go towards both manufacturing and R&D, research and development. A few days ago, Japan too made a new pledge. It has promised another $7 billion in subsidies. Japan couldn't supply the semiconductors, which are now produced by TSMC and JASM. I believe that as the construction of these factories progresses, the missing piece in Japan's semiconductor industry will be filled. We believe that this will contribute to strengthen Japan's entire supply chain. In all, Japan is pouring in $33 billion in its chip industry. 
What about India? Well, India is doing its bit. In February this year, New Delhi cleared investment proposals worth $15 billion. These are private sector investments aimed at setting up chip making plants in the country. Moral of the story? If you're in the chip making business, you're entering a golden era. Governments around the world want to expand capabilities and they're willing to invest big money in this. And this investment underscores how chips have become the new strategic asset.